Good evening. Welcome back to Checkpoint. We are delighted to have your company this evening. Um, spokesperson, let me come back to you directly. Before we go to what I did say, what we'll discuss when we return, and that is a question around our border with Somalia that many would argue is an issue. We'll get here just as you respond. Tell me first, last year around October, there were reports and in fact a memo that leaked that there were some individuals that were looking to attack uh, some buildings in the central business district, six individuals, even some of their names were released. And the question here is, would you tell us if these are the same people that attacked the side? Well, what I would want to tell you without going down to the details of intelligence, is that our security machinery has foiled numerous terrorism attempts. But there are a few clarifications I want to make here, and now I, I crave your indulgence. Give me a little bit more time. The success in Riverside was not because the criminals goofed. Our weaknesses in Westgate and in Garissa were that the criminals were left to be on the offensive for far too long. In Riverside, within the first one hour, because of action by our response agencies, direct company and the rest of them, actually all of them, the criminals were on the run. They were there plenty of time. They were there for more than 12 hours. But the fact is that most of those 12 hours, they were also running away and hiding because the heat was too much. And that is why our agencies were able to prioritize evacuation and the final assault on them. So you cannot confirm whether they are the same people? So, just to my question. What I want to put very clearly, yes. you won't drive me into sharing operational intelligence with All you right. on this channel. What I would want to tell you is that going back to where the weaknesses reside, our intelligence has done the best it can. But I was asking Warunga earlier, if you are living in London today, let's say in the neighborhood of Leicester, and you start building a wall around your house, what would happen? You will have neighbors on apron. You will have the police on apron. Actually, you'll be a person of interest right away. Our key vulnerability is that we have so many individuals living among us without visible means of subsistence and the citizen does not ask himself, Rita, Eric, you know, Sophia, Eric, and Odera, we don't ask ourselves, is this man engaging in an activity which can violate my rights today or in future? We have other, a lot of complaints on other crimes. You watch your neighbor smoking cannabis and continue hoping that your son will not do it for the longest time and you continue complaining our intelligence, our police are not acting. It is a high time we realize that our rights are not predicated on some government somewhere. Community policing, Nyumba Kumi, is about protecting yourself by watching your neighbor and ensuring you know its identity. We know what it does because policing is about public policy. We have a public policy about the means of subsistence. If you're working for KTN, we know where you are getting your money. So let me get you clear. So, what you're saying, in your view, that the yes. biggest problem we have is that Nyumba Kumi policing, that responsibility begins with your security begins with you, is the problem. Not the porous walls, not that we've seen clear failures in as far as some of uh, what I was talking about earlier, a criminal who was moving around and was part of this attack. Yes. Um, that's what you see as a problem, to be clear. I, I couldn't have put it better. And not that the government is escaping responsibility for it. That is the area we now need to develop. It has reached Why an extent... Why isn't the government continuing with creating are, awareness like it used to on Nyumba Kumi, being on the no, far front? We are, we are to doing a lot. Make we sure the public knows, share anything you see. Maybe, maybe my office yeah. has not been working hard enough to communicate what the government is doing. But I can tell you, the government is doing a lot. We are re-engineering our approaches, and we want to ensure that there is a broader buy-in from every other citizen, mm -hmm. so that... The right to privacy 
does not supersede and stumble on every other right. right. We but, must yeah. have a situation where every citizen is accountable first to the next citizen, mm -hmm. next to the society, and we as a country, we as individuals, we are enforcing that. Warunga, what do you see as the biggest issue for you in as far as our security is concerned? Because uh, on what the spokesperson is saying, I was at Riverside and one man, a trader right at the entrance, uh, was telling me how he saw the car they used to attack there several times. So had he perhaps reported, we never know what would have happened. So that is one issue, Nyumba Kumi, and perhaps you can speak to what needs to be done to make sure we all see it as an important issue to exchange reports, these kind of details. But still, the border, does it worry you? That wall, should we start talking about it again? Yes, I think we shall talk about it, but let me speak this one before I forget. Mm. One, the government has put in several mechanisms to allow the people of this country to participate in our national security. National Counterterrorism Center has a component on public awareness and education. Are they doing it right? That is not the government. It's the people who are in charge, or the person who is in charge of that center and his team that is supposed to come up with programs to educate Kenyans. The biggest problem in this country is that people are given responsibilities and they think they own them. Because I know for a fact they have a department or a section for public participation in terms of public education and awareness. Number two, Sophia, the government came up with Nyumbakumi. I was part of that Nyumbakumi for about 18 months. But if you come up with such a noble, brilliant idea and you give it poor leadership, we can't blame the government. Okay, we blame it because it gave it to the wrong person. But you see, that was such a noble initiative, what you are just asking Mr. Kareide to talk about. I remember I was there. I did the budget myself, although we were many. The government did not remove a cent from what we demanded. Because we told them this is what we want to do, this is how we want to do it. And I remember the government said, have it in two years. After that, they, were, they went to something called People's Participation Committee or something. So, so it, it, sometimes I think the government, like we were discussing in Mr. Karaide, when you know you want to go to Mombasa, you don't use a tuk-tuk. You use a Mercedes or SGR or the aircraft. Mm -hmm. So if you want to achieve something, give it to the right people. Appoint the right people to drive this thing. And that is our weakest link. And it's the government people. that appoints. So. And it's the government. And that is our weakest link where the government has a program. It gives it to the wrong people. Then you find that Mwanainchi here has no connection with the government security agencies. Then lastly, Nyumbakumi. Where Mr. Kareide, I mean, uh, community policing, where Mr. Kareide belongs. This is from 2010, this is 2018. 19. 19. Ask him to tell us where is the model community policing. I know there was Kikuyu, I know there was Larry, but when the Swedish people pulled out, it died. And this is 18 years down the line when we had a new constitution. We had a new uh, act for National Police Service Act that speaks directly to the inspector, ensuring that they create systems and initiatives in this country where people have a channel of working with the police. So to me, that is the weakest link. But did the government think right? Yes. Did the people think right? Yes. What is the problem? People who have been put in charge to do those things. So then, spokesperson, I'll give you an opportunity to respond to that because then is the government, as he says, one not putting right point in place. As you say, people need to share more information. Are you putting that mechanism in place, guiding, being Sophia, at the far uh, front? Sophia, I serve a government with a chief executive who apologizes, who apologizes any day of the week when there are shortcomings. I wouldn't want to tell you that uh, I know there are civil servants, there are public servants who can do better than they are doing. What I would want to assure you and to assure every Kenyan is that this government had demonstrated a, less, you know, a capacity to learn from the shortcomings of Westgate, from the shortcomings of Garissa, from the challenges of silo mentality in security where we have now completely smooth and seamless interagency cooperation, even on critical moments like 
14 Riverside. Right. And we are taking stock of all these things, and the mistake done shall be corrected. Oh, I want us to speak about the arming private uh, guards. Uh, and before we do that, let's listen to Fazul Mohammed. He's a CEO of Kenya Private Security Regulatory Authority. He says in six months, uh, private security guards will be uh, licensed to hold firearms, those that are manning uh, public institutions. This is a bit of what he said. We are going to have a lot of support from other national security organs in the training of the people who we are going to give firearms. And who are we going to give the firearms to? Huh? <coughs> Is it every guard? No. To Melawana, we are going to give a certain category of people based on the risk assessment that we have done and taken. So the first area is for the guards who are going to guard key strategic public installations, yeah, where there is heavy human traffic, yeah, and that will also do what security assessment. This includes all malls, huh? That includes hotels and public places like Uhuru Park and other places. To Melawana, schools, universities, you know places which have a high traffic, so we must make sure that the public and the Kenyan people are properly protected. That's Fazo Mohammed, CEO, uh, KPSRCA, uh, I beg your pardon. Um, Adara, your thoughts on that? Is that the way to go, the way forward? With uh, all due respect to Mr. Fazul, I think this is the holy grail of the security challenges that we have. It's a fixation on the wrong scoreboard, and uh, to me, it may be lacking in uh, thoroughness and understanding of the security landscape in which we're operating in today. I mean, uh, I've been exposed to um, guards of all, you know, uh, colors and shapes. And for a fact, I know the business of uh, having a weapon in your hands is something that is, and of course the organization around just having a gun in your hand, be it in the relevant security agencies that we know of, is a high reliability uh, job. It requires a certain, uh, uh, you know, state of discipline, um, expertise, uh, a lot of weight is on your shoulders, especially when you just have that gun in your hands. And if it push comes to shove and you go to squeeze the trigger, that decision flies at about 800 meters per second. You do not want to trust this kind of uh, responsibility with people who we know. For lack of a better word, uh, for me, it's, 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 uh, sometimes it's nothing beyond just them uh, being warm bodies in uniform. In uniform, the difference between them and the dead is perhaps just that. And this is in terms of their awareness, in terms of the training that we have, in terms of um, the clamor to just make money. I know of several security companies that I know are lined up to you know, take this away and run away with it. And if you're talking about open spaces like um, Huru Park or malls and all the rest of it, we all go into these malls, plus the most high end of malls. And the kind of access control when you went, go into those malls completely armed is worrying. It's disheartening to see yourself going in when you're armed and you have things on your body, perhaps even just a spoon to test the systems that are in place. And the best that people do is to you know, sweep that, you know, sweep you with a wand, and they allow you to go in without any kind of follow-on process as opposed to identify that threat and okay. action on those threats. So yeah. what I feel is, and, and this is basically even our understanding of the most high end of uh, operators on the land, the special forces, it's not in the name, it's not in the, the type of people that we are, it's in the basics done excellently. And those basics have not been, um, to me, any kind of understanding that can be given in the right direction does not inspire hope and confidence. The fact that in six months, any guard that's operating within the borders of Kenya is we'll going to be ready to yeah. uh, employ you know, weapons. Well, Runga, there are those who say if you do not give them these firearms, what chance do they stand when confronted with someone with a grenade with a firearm? Let, let me first answer your question on the ball, quickly, on the, on the wall. I'm, I'm told they've done around 16 or so kilometers. Mr. Kreider cannot be speaking some of these things, his government. But we know they've done around 16 to 17 kilometers. Uh, that is not a deterrent. And I think people are making money, let them make money. But as a country, we know that that will not stop anything. What we require is high-tech border fencing, 
surveillance equipment that do not necessarily require a, a wall. That, to me, is a, a waste of government resources. Um, I have no idea why they are doing it, because it will never stop anything. But that is by the way. Okay. So let me come to the guards. Yes, we need to start having some level of arming to the private security guards. My worry is, and with due respect to Fazul, Fazul is the CEO of that authority. But I'm hoping that he's not speaking and that he's going to implement these things with his board. Because arming the country is not something as simple the way he's putting it. And they'll give you an example. We have Uganda, they are armed. We have Tanzania. Uganda, most of these guys are veterans. People who have fought in wars and battles in the guerrilla war, and that's where M7 started. Tanzania, the level of corruption and the level of corruption in Kenya, and I speak as a Kenyan and I know we are corrupt, is not the same. So in this country, if we are going to arm them, and I think we should start arming some, so one, what criteria will be to I'm, I'm some not telling you. Briefly, what time one, is running out? regulations yeah. must be foolproof. Two, procedures for these people or companies that will be given must be done thoroughly and without haste. Three, recruitment procedure. We must now start having people who are going to be armed who have some level of education that will assist them to understand what it means to own a gun. So therefore, it's not just waking up because we have a terror attack and you tell us it is six months. No, this thing must go methodically, it must be procedurally, and it must have good regulations. All right, Spokes, your thoughts? Well, what I would want to tell you, as a security expert in my own right, when you look at this country, when you look at Makueni or Nyanza, then you compare it with Marisabet and Trukana or Capedo, you realize that the presence of guns is the presence of insecurity. Whether you are talking about Capedo, New York, or Somalia, and when you look at countries like Norway, Japan, and even the United Kingdom, where even ordinary policemen don't carry firearms, the prevalence of violent crime follows firearms. And the opposite is true. This that is a is, government agency saying that, that you're saying you universal. disagree with Let this? me come to that. In this country, we have a lot of illegal firearms. We also have a lot of legal firearms which we cannot properly account for in the name of reservists. And I believe that is why FAZU is very clear that there will be a lot of caution. I am sure sentiments like that of Mr. Werunga will be taken into full consideration because there is also a risk where you have a lot of firearms in the wrong places and no firearms at all in the right places. Once again, what I would want to caution here because there might be other experts listening there, the presence of firearm is protective security. It is not a preventive measure. It is not known to sustain law and order. Mm -hmm. It is like our MPs who walk around with 10 guards during the day, and then you meet him alone in a pub during the night in a very dangerous place. We cannot decide that we shall prevent crime because the criminals are aware that when they go to execute an attack, they will be shot. Those are not the dynamics of musketry. Okay. Those are di not the dynamics of firearm use. But I would want to tell you from the government perspective, we are going to be taking, you have heard him talking about risk assessment, a lot of appraisals. So we are handling the matter with a lot of caution mm. so that we don't aggravate an already bad situation. Our time is up, but I'll give you 30 seconds to please answer this question for me. The government had promised post-Westgate that a public inquiry would be conducted into that attack. So the question yeah. now is, why hasn't that happened yet? Does the government not see the need to conduct that public inquiry on even Elade, this one, Westgate, as was promised? What we will undertake as a government is to share the information we share with the public. Security operations. Government promised an Holding inquiry, a sir. public in inquiry, Sophia, is basically doing drama. What I would want so to tell you is that in this country, 
the government looked at all those security interests, uh, you know, incidents. We have analyzed them over and over again. We have invited local and international experts to help us, and every lesson has been implemented. And that is why even the public can see the change. The final thing I would want to say is that the government is saddened. We are with heavy hearts because we lost a lot of lives. 21 people are not few. In 14 Riverside, our prayers are with this family. Our prayers are with those who are in hospitals. All right, sir. We are asking Kenyans, even as we talk about these things, let us not forget about these families right. and the people who are lying in hospital beds injured. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Our time, unfortunately, is up. Uh, we appreciate you for being with us right here on Checkpoint. Uh, Byron Adara is a country spokesperson of the Association of Corporate and Industrial Security Management Professionals. Uh, government spokesperson Eric Kiraide, as well as Simi Werunga, Director, Center for Security Studies. We thank you as well for being with us. Stay with us. Robinson Okenya is coming up next with Sports News.